Welcome everyone to the Directed IRA podcast with Mark Kohler and Matt Sorensen. We're delighted to be with you today talking about Roth, Roth oh, accounts, how no, to have no. more. It's it's better than that. It's the mega backdoor Roth. This is, Ooh. this is. Which if you didn't know is how you can get more than 60 grand per year into a Roth account that can come out tax-free at retirement. And you can self-direct it and invest in whatever the freak you want. <laughs> and you mean I don't have to just buy mutual funds? Yeah. And you know, I had a phone call with a client yesterday. We were talking about the charitable remainder trust. We we're doing some additional strategies with CRT and some crypto and some real estate. And the client said, and they go, and his wife was on the phone. And she's like, well, I want to do a Roth strategy too. Can we do that inside of CRT? And I go, no, they're kind of brother, sister. We do the Roth over here. And yeah. we do the CRT over here, but they can work in concert. And we talked about some strategies there. And then they go, well, hold it. How much can I put into a Roth? And I said, with the mega backdoor Roth, freaking over 60 grand. And they were like, brains blown. Yeah. And then the husband said this, well, I can't get to it till I'm 65 and I'm 55 now. I don't want to wait 10 years. I go, whoa, 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 whoa. You can access the Roth IRA at 59 and a half. It's like a tax-free ATM. Just pull out whatever the freak you want at 59 and a half. He goes, what? I go, have you had the Roth for at least a year already? Yeah, I've had a Roth for a while. It's only yeah. got a few thousand in it. I go, five years or 59 and a half, whichever's earlier. Yeah. It's all yours, baby. Yeah. I mean, 65 is when you can get Medicare, but you know, 59 and a half is when you can pull that money out of the Roth tax-free. But also here's the cool thing about the Roth. The contributions you put in can come out tax-free whenever you want. It's the earnings and growth. You got to wait till you're 59 and a half. Yeah. So it's like the best savings account that you can still pull out what you put in without yeah. any tax or penalty. Yep. So, and this is why we're doing the mega backdoor Roth today, because it's like the Roth on steroids. Hmm. So in the Roth, is and steroids like on if the Roth of- was on steroids and also worked out every day. That's what it's like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause the Roth is already on steroids compared to a traditional. Now we're like, now we're going to work out too. We're putting it in the weight room, baby. Yep, yep. Now a quick disclaimer for those, we're going to do some slides here in a moment, but a quick disclaimer for those watching on um, YouTube. Uh, we did not plan this. Uh, we've got, both of us are wearing blue white. with white shirts. This is true. Yeah. Some may call this cougar blue. If you know what it is, you know how hard it is for me to say that. But <laughs> <laughs> some of you have no idea what it's like. Um, I know what a cougar is, but you guys, <laughs> I don't think that works. Yeah, that's true. That's a football team reference. But I will say this. I think it's kind of cool. Matt's the young blue jacket with the white button down. I'm kind of the little older blue, <laughs> blue sweater over the white polo. It's kind of, it just says, I'm the rich guy at the table. Matt's kind of the, you know. I'm still trying to dress up to impress people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of like. Says. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying too hard. <laughs> yeah, I'm show up. I'll have an appetizer. Hook me up, you know. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh. All right. Okay. So people, what was the main thing our, our our team said? But when you get on there, make sure you tell everybody. I said it. I said it. That we want to make sure you know what the heck a mega backdoor Roth is. Yeah, That's say how it you again. can get over 60,000 per year into a Roth account. I know many of you are like, I thought I could only do 6,000 or maybe nope. I can only do 20,000. I can't do anything. I make too much kit. money. I make too much exactly. money. Exactly. Yeah. No, 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 no. No. We're going to cut right. through the BS and let you know how you can do it um, and go over the strategies and how it adds up. It, yep. And this, uh, let me say this. This is why you got to know this stuff and be informed because a lot of people are going to give you the quick, easy answer of just no. Because when people don't know your financial advisor, your CPA, they're uninformed. They want to just say, no, you can't do it because they look, they're going to look like a moron when they try and tell you how to do it because they don't know. So yeah. we're going to teach you. Here's how you do it. We're going to go through the technical rules on how it stacks up where you can get to over 60,000 a year. I love it. Now we're going to show some slides here at this point. So we'll do a quick cut as I bring this up on the screen and we're going to start going through the steps of this to do the mega backdoor Roth. So everybody, here we go. All right. Now in the mega backdoor Roth, it all starts with the basic Roth, and we've got to dispel some myth, myths. Uh, Matt, what does this tell us? All right. The first thing you're going to do is you want to put 6,000 bucks 
in a Roth IRA. And the myth Mark's talking about is a lot of people know if I'm high income, I can't just drop 6,000 bucks into a Roth. And we got the slide here outlining what's high, you know, high income here. Just for those on the podcast, you know, have the benefit of seeing the video here. You know, if you're making over basically 200 grand married, 125,000 single, you're going to be phasing out on this. And you can't go in what we call the front door for a Roth IRA, but there's another door. Yep. Now also for those that are watching the video, you see six or 7,000. So we've got to make that distinction that if you're under age 50, it's six grand. If you're over 50 or older, it's seven grand. And so what a lot of CPAs say, or financial advisors is you make too much money, you can't do a Roth. And that's, they don't tell you a couple extra strategies or rules, which we're going to unveil now. But before we go to the next slide, I want to point this out too. Some people go, well, I'm too old. You're never too old to do a Roth, period. Mm -hmm. And then people go, you said you can do this with your kids? Yeah, I've got kids that are two years old with a Roth. All they have to have is earned income. Now you got to have a unique scenario with the small business that could- Yeah, the two-year-olds, you know, maybe yeah. they're, you know, the child actor, but- you got to have, you know, but definitely your teenagers and those people working the family business are great yeah. for the kid Roths. They have income or they got their summer job or whatever. Yeah. And, and I'm being a little aggressive saying a two-year-old, but I had a client, I have a client right now that has a children's clothing online business and they use professional photographers for their clothing line and they'll integrate their kids into the models for their yeah. online legitimate clothing, children's clothing business. So can they pay their kids for being models in that business? Absolutely. I yeah. have clients that do pediatric dentistry with their children in some how-to videos and this and that. So we're not going to just throw a two-year-old on someone's payroll right. that's not legitimate. But yeah. the point is, again, any age, two-year-old or 92-year-old can have a Roth IRA with a little earned income. So that myth is dispelled and we don't care what your income level is. So here's this next slide, Matt. Um, show us how this works. Yeah. All right. So I said, you know, you can't go in the front door. So what we're going to do is with, this is called the backdoor Roth. And you may have heard news, the backdoor Roth IRA is getting closed and shut out. There was legislation on that last year. It didn't pass. The backdoor Roth has not been locked shut. It's still open. You can still go <laughs> through it. All right. Guys. So what, what the backdoor Roth means is, is you don't qualify to make a deductible traditional IRA contribution if you're high income but you can still make a traditional IRA contribution. It's just non-deductible. Well, why don't I make a non-deductible traditional IRA contribution? I'm high income and I'm going to convert it to Roth. You can convert non-deductible traditional contributions over to Roth. And so that's all we're doing. It's kind of this two-step process. It's commonly known as the backdoor Roth. We have prior podcast episodes just on the backdoor Roth, but this is an important one because this is the easy one for a lot of people that are just like, guys, I don't have 60 grand to throw in every year, but I got six. Or even if you're like, dude, I got as much as I can throw in. Well, let's do this mega backdoor 401k Roth and the Roth IRA to get to this even higher number. So okay. that's how we're going to get the first six. Yeah. And you know, um, on this note, um, I need to promote my sponsor here, Rockstar, because I'm a Rockstar CPA. <laughs> uh, just a little shameless plug, but I don't know what to do with my hands. Matt, yeah, I, Ricky Bobby, I what? Just, just, just put, 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 put your hands on. I, I don't know what to do with my hand. Yeah, the car, car, it drove, drove real good. Drove, drove, drove fast. <laughs> Go fast. <laughs> no, it. Whisper. Anyway, for those Talladega Night fans, that's a, you know, a nice little scene there. Okay, but notice off to the left on this slide, we we were told by our current CPA or financial advisor, um, can't do it. They're wrong. Yeah. Now, notice the little however, now for those, again, listening, I'm pointing out the different sections of this slide, that this is why a lot of financial advisors will say you can't do it because they're thinking two steps ahead and don't tell you this, but it's a fair point, is that if you have old traditional IRAs again, you have to convert those to Roth first. But what they don't say is, let's, let's see if we can crack the code here. What could we do with that old IRA? Oh, we could roll it into a 401k that you've got sitting over on the shelf here. And that rule is gone. Or, yep. hey, do you want to do some chunking and convert some of that other IRA? Yeah, I would, Tom. Yeah. Okay. Well, you let's probably do want that. all that to be Roth anyways, right? Yeah. <laughs> so they don't take the time to say that yeah. there's some ideas here that could work, you know? And so it just 
drives you crazy. All right. Yep. Okay. Now the next slide. Oh my gosh. This is step two. Okay. In the stacking to get to the, okay. I'm going to show the slide just so you know where we're headed. This is the coolest slide. This is the mega backdoor Roth cylinder of power. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> this is going to show you how we stack this bad boy up and we get to our levels. Okay. Yeah. And just so everyone listening again on YouTube, you're, we're, we're adding up how these numbers add up to get to the over 60,000 here we're talking about. So yeah. there's a couple, there's really three little amounts in the cylinder of power. Or cylinder of power. Okay. So we got to go back to the um, grid spreadsheet here. And step one was get your Roth 401. Sorry, step one was get your Roth IRA funded. And if you need to convert some old traditional money, do it. Or move it to a 401k and back and, and get rid of that rule. Um, but step two is, okay, now I've got to use the 401k strategy. Now, literally before I started this, this uh, podcast today, I text a client of mine who makes well over $500,000. He's got a group 401k that he participates in at work, but they also have a side business. And because of the number of employees they have at work, they're able to have a side business and a solo 401k. So now they can use the power of the 401k at their day job and the power of a solo 401k in their small business. Some of you just have a small business with no employees or some part-time employees. We, we, we don't think you have to have a solo 401k to do this. Yeah. With a group 401k, it can be a little more clunky or more steps, but you still can. So be patient. Yeah. But the next step is the 401k. What's your take on this, Matt? Yeah, the first clients I did this with actually were oil and gas workers in Alaska, you know, that like worked four months out of the year, but they made great income. They had really low expenses. And it was this group of guys that were just really into finance and saving and investing. And they had 401ks at Fidelity with this oil and gas company 401k, where they were getting these, these mega backdoor contributions in that was all Roth. And you know what's funny? And you, some of you, I don't, we're grateful for many of our followers. And some of you think we're kind of smart. We're really not. We just <laughs> do this enough to, that we learn things that we start to share with you. And probably our more than smart, I, I would say is, and, I, and I'm proud of it. We have an ability to make this somewhat interesting and explain it in layman's terms. That's really yeah. is our claim to fame. And so where did we learn this strategy? From a client. <laughs> you think they're teaching this at workshops for CPAs and attorneys? We're the ones teaching it at workshops for CPAs and attorneys. But we had a client teach us this. I mean, it was oh, freaking. Yeah. And it was cool. And I was like, yeah. wow, you can do that? And then yeah. got dug into it, realized you could. And um, and so, you know, so here we are teaching it. And and there's other ways you can do this. But this is the this is the cleanest, clear-cut way to get to it. Um, we're going to get into this on the 401k because it includes this after-tax contribution. Yes. Okay. Now, in this grid, for those of you listening on the podcast, and uh, what I'm showing here is within the 401k, there's two or three pieces, which the cylinder of power will show you in a moment. Yeah. The first piece is, okay, I'm setting aside your Roth IRA. Okay. That's really the first step. But in the 401k, there's kind of an ABC. The first part of the 401k is your deferral. You know, how much do you want to defer? Now, you might be doing a little bit of deferral at your day job and getting a match. Love it. We call that matching out. Get the match, get the hell out. But then in your solo 401k, if for those that have that strategy, you're going to do the rest of your deferral in your solo. Or if those of you that just have a day job, you're going to defer your entire amount, even if you don't get a match on the whole thing. This year, the, the, the diagram shows 20,500 if you're under 50, 27,000 if you're 50 or older. Then part B of the 401k is this matching thing. Now, why yeah. I say there's a B and a C is if you're at a day job, they're only going to match up to so much. So we've got to add another piece, which is called this non-deductible 401k contribution. Or if you have a solo 401k, you might do it through a match strategy with your S corp or this non-deferral. Now I know I just said a lot of things that sounded girly yeah. goop, be patient with me. But what I'm just trying to say is the 401k is not just one check. 
it's made up of one, two, or three pieces to get that next, because we got to stack this thing to get to that mega backdoor, th backdoor amount. Some of you would just like say, oh, where do I write a check? Yeah, it's not that easy. So, <laughs> so you got to be patient yeah. with me. Okay. And, and it does take kind of like the backdoor Roth IRA we showed where you're making that non-deductible contribution, you convert to Roth. In the 401k, it's actually called after tax. It's similar in that you don't get a deduction on it, but it's this after tax contribution, which you make a Roth conversion on. So it's kind of like once I did that 20,500 of straight Roth, now I'm doing after tax contribution converting to Roth. It's kind of a similar process. I always say it the wrong way. Matt, Matt correct. <laughs> I, I didn't say always. Before the show, I said, oh, the after tax piece. And then as soon as I get on the show, I call it the non-deductible. I screwed up every time, but it's kind of a weird spot. Now I've got to do my Instagram, you know, post here for my, you know, that we're legit today. <laughs> See, always got to work the, you know, system. So, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Gotta get, gotta get some out there on the gram. Yep. Okay. Now here is the cylinder of power. All right, now this is the under 50, and we've got the 50 and over. So just mm -hmm. under 50, let's, let's show what this looks like. So the first thing is, is the bottom portion of the cylinder is your individual Roth. We already talked about that. You're under age 50, here's your six grand. Yeah. Then you've got your 401k employee contribution that can be straight Roth. That's yeah. easy. There's no conversion, just straight. Yep. Matt, what's your take on this? See this little match thing? It's yeah. like, what's your take on that? Well, some of you, let, let's say you have the, the day job 401k, right? Um, they're, they're throwing in a match likely in that, but you can convert that to Roth. Let's say maybe they threw in 5,000 of a match on your 20,500. Um, you could convert that five grand to Roth. Boom, right there. Yep, okay. Now- and, but if you don't, let's say you, they, they don't match anything. They're like, you're on your own. You want to throw in money, throw in money. And there's some 401ks like that. Um, then you're just at the 25. And then we keep going up the cylinder here because we can still get more in. Okay. Now, I'm going to give, if some of you are like, okay, this is a little complicated. Let me make a, a simple statement too that might help shortcut a lot of this. Everything you're putting in is either Roth or going to be converted to Roth. And that's okay. Don't, don't stress over, well, what part am I converting? What part, no, no, just, just deal with the strategy here that we're gonna sock all this money away and it yeah. will either be converted to Roth or it was Roth. Well, the, your advisor, your tax person should know how to do all this. But if they don't, you'll show in this slide. And, and by the way, oh, shameless plug time. This slide, will be in your workbook at the Directed IRA Summit, which is held next week. You could buy a virtual ticket and get access to all these slides or come in person to Southern California, who doesn't wanna to go to Costa Mesa this time of year and come live with all of our vendors and giveaways, lunch, all included networking. But all of these slides will be in your workbook and we're gonna vet it more at the summit. Matt, how do they sign yeah. up? You yeah, it, SD, just, yeah, SDIRA summit.com, SDIRA summit.com. Okay. Be there. Some of you are like, I need to send my accountant to that workshop. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you can add a guest, add a guest at checkout. Yeah. And you know why we held the summit on April, what is it, 19th and 20th or 20 and 21st? 21st, 22nd. Yeah. Because it's after the tax deadline of April 18th this year. So all of the accountants are looking for a yeah. weekend away. After the tax deadline, come to Costa Mesa, have lunch and learn some of these strategies. Your clients will love you. Mm -hmm. if you have a CPA that needs a little education, grab them by the ear and bring them along. Mm -hmm. Not that you want to spend a weekend with your CPA, but well, some of you might. You know. Maybe you do. There's some cool accounts out there. Yeah, there's some cool kids out there. Where am I at? I got to get in front of the screen here. Okay. Now, in our cylinder of power, individual <laughs> Roth at the bottom, then your, your deferral. Get any match you can, fine, if the employer does it. Then you go up to the last piece of the cylinder. And this is what Matt clarified for me earlier and is properly typed here. It's <laughs> called the after-tax employee traditional contribution. The reason why I like this than a match, if you're in a solo 401k, 
is you can take a lower salary and get there. Yeah. See, a lot of people say, oh, if I do a match, it's 25% of whatever my salary is on top of my deferral. Well, this is a new strategy we've learned at our accounting and law firm in the last two years yeah. is over to the right side, you can see that if I take an optimal payroll amount of 66 grand, I can defer almost the entire thing into Roth money by doing this after tax thing. Now, if you need to take a bigger salary because your company made more money, take a bigger salary, stay out of hot water with the IRS. But if you are, a, if you have some flexibility to take a lower salary, your sweet spot here is 66053. Yeah. And remember, that's going in. Now, this is on your W-2, too. And so you've got to have the earned income also. So you've got to at least have that amount of earned income. This is whether you're self-employed, doing the solo, or you got the day job, you know, 401k at Dunder Mifflin. And so you're, you're able to do this both. Now, most 401ks, like definitely our solo K allows for after tax. Most company 401ks actually allow for after tax. It's more the exception that, it, that a big company 401k does not allow the after tax. So, um, so it's, it's pretty widely available is basically what I'm trying to get at here. Um, it's just learning how to execute it and pull it off that sometimes that's where you can get tripped up. You call HR, your 401k administrator at the day job, and they're like, I don't know. Um, or they say no because they don't know how to do it. So this is, this is the strategy. And the hard part really is this after-tax amount because it's got to go in as after-tax. It's on your W-2. Um, or actually, is it not on the W-2? I think we actually realize it's not on the W-2. Is that right? The after-tax? Oh, the after-tax is in box 13. So it's, okay. it's, it's a box on the W-2. Yep, okay. And for you accountants out there, you're, you're, you want to make sure... Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> Can I, all right, let me, let's get to This is going to get geeky for a minute. I can Yeah, tell. you see the geekness coming. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, oh. Is coming out. Yep, here it comes. Here's the geek. Okay. Right now it's April. Uh, we're recording this uh, what, April 12th, 13th. It's going to go live today, tomorrow. We want you to have this in time in, in before the deadline and make sure all of you come to the summit next week after the tax deadline. But, but here's... Here, let's get real. Notice up in this slide, it says 2022. The reason why is you've got a plan for this no later than January of the year you want to take, of the prior year, uh, sorry, of the subsequent year you want to take advantage of. So if you want to do a mega back door for 2022, you're going to be putting some of this information on your W-2 in January of 2023. Because see, this has got to all add up for 2022, and that's why we're sharing it now. Now, you can do some of this mega backdoor for 2021 still, but if you missed some of this on your W-2 three months ago in January, eh, the ship already sailed. So yeah. we can't get the entire 61 grand in this example, or 67 grand if you're under age 50. Yeah. Um, but you could maybe do the employer contribution and convert that to Roth for if you're looking at 2021. So- yeah. There, there could be a couple things you could do because employers not do. Um, and again, it's going to turn on your salary and everything. But let's say you had a hundred thousand dollar W two, that's twenty five grand you could throw in as as company match, com employer contribution. You convert convert to Roth again. Not the regular way to do it because it takes a higher salary. But I'm just saying it's a save for those of you that didn't get this right in 2021 yet. Yeah, and literally, I have a call with a client right after this that is literally saying, okay, what do I put in my 401k? Because see, the cool part about this is if you're planning properly, you can put the numbers on all the right forms in December, January, up yeah. until April 15th, whatever. But you actually don't have to put the money into your 401k until the date you file your tax return with extensions. So if you extend next week on April 18th, and, you, and you've put the numbers in the right spots on your W-2, you're okay. You still have yeah. time to put the money in. Um, it's, so anyway, yeah. that's, that's the bad news. So you CPAs out there, make sure that you're putting these numbers in the right boxes on the W-2 in January for the previous year you're trying to pull this off. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And those with like the day job 401k, 
this is a little more trickier because you don't have a lot of flexibility. You're dealing with HR and yeah. your W-2s cut, you know, they ain't getting the change. So you got to be on it. But those of you self-employed, you get a little more flexibility because, you know, you're the boss. Okay. Now, here's the climax of the show for those under age 50 is look up in the top right-hand corner. Your maximum Roth for this year in 2022 can be $67,000 each if you're married. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You just did $134,000 in Roth as a married couple. Now, That's awesome. Some of you are like, I don't even make that much money. That's all right. Someday you will. That's yeah. the beauty of the marriage. You can dream. work your way up in the cylinder of power, you know? Just, just, yeah. That's okay. All right. I'll let Matt show the next slide, you know, climactic moment here up in the right hand corner of yeah. those 50 year old. Where are we at? Yeah, the cool thing about those 50 or 50 and older is you get to put more in. The IRS is trying to incentivize those 50 or older who want to throw more in to put more in. Plus, so, plus we're smarter. That's right. You know, we're, we're a little more you know, seasoned. Yeah. A little, a little more, um, they have more wisdom. Yeah. You know, I don't know. We're, yeah, so, we're there for you. But you also get to put more. And what's the number? So on the IRA, you get an extra thousand. So we're instead of six, we're doing seven. But on the Roth 401k, we're, we're able to do 27,000. That's just the straight Roth 401k employee contribution as opposed to the 20,500. And so what that allows me to do here is now I'm able to throw 74,500 in on a mega backdoor Roth at the end of the day. Again, if you got a spouse over 50 in the working in the business too, you both could be doing that and throwing almost 150 grand of Roth new contribution dollars in each year. I love, you know how sly Matt is? I mean, this is that slick Willie attorney in him. Notice how he said, you could be doing about 150. See, he didn't want to do the math of 74,500 times two <laughs> because he was like, I, I don't want to go there. And, and 149,000 doesn't sound as cool. Either. <laughs> yeah. You just, you, it's really 149. But, you know, he was like, yeah, about 150. You know, what's he said what's, about? You know, what's a thousand? 149, 150. You know. I'm not an accountant. I get to I get to do the fuzzy math. It's close <laughs> enough. <laughs> fuzzy math. Fuzzy math. Who was the Who was the president that did fuzzy math? Who was that? I think that was Al Gore. Wasn't that Al Gore on George Bush? Or, I don't know who that fuzzy was. Fuzzy math. Yeah, fuzzy it was math. Like that. Oh my gosh, we have to look that up. Um, I you know it's funny over the weekend math Matt I listened to the Moth. Sorry, I was mixing up the word Moth and Matt there. Yeah. So if any of you ever listened to the Moth Radio Show or the Moth Radio, it's it's live stories that have to be truthful. Yeah. Told without notes about yourself in less than 15 minutes. And they're in a bar or a stage setting and it's called the moth. Anyway, one of my bucket list items is I want to do a moth someday. Yeah. And tell a story. <laughs> cool. um, I think I could survive after doing all these podcasts, but um, the moth that is so funny and even Matt, yeah. I've had him listen to it is the, the speech writer for Al Gore. Wasn't that yeah, the best? That is hilarious. I highly recommend that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just Google Al Gore moth and <laughs> the moth radio Al Gore. And there's a, a, a speech writer that tells us a story in under 15 minutes, true, live, yeah. uh, without notes about writing a, a speech for Al Gore. And oh my gosh, it, it, Republican or Democrat, doesn't matter. It's just funny. It's just yeah. so good. Yeah. And I love the joke. He t this wasn't exactly the whole point. He has a great set up on it writing speeches for Al Gore but he said um that I just love this about Al Gore it's like he, he came up with the joke or he somehow tweaked someone else's joke that Al Gore is so boring his secret service code name is Al Gore <laughs> that's so hilarious I love it oh my gosh yeah and it, it's it's classic okay well everybody that's it I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing the screen here um, and, uh, just summarize with people. Sometimes it really is that true. It's not too good to be true. It is that good. And it's true. <laughs> there is a mega backdoor Roth that exists. Yeah. It is not a, what is it, a, a unicorn, whatever it's, this yeah. is for real. It's real. Yeah. You can do it. But like many things that are super cool that you can do, particularly in the tax planning world. There's not an easy button. Okay. <laughs> no, this backdoor true. stuff and the after tax, it takes a little getting used to.
But you know what? Once you figure it out and get through it the first year and your accountant gets on the board with it, you figure it out in your retirement account and how you're doing it, you do the same thing next year. And so it's not as hard. So your first time doing it, it might, I'm just saying, you got to figure out the hoops to jump through and every little retirement account place or administrators a little, or accountant's going to take a little different process to get you there. Um, but, but just know there's a path. And, and for all of you out there that have maybe found the show or watching this on YouTube and getting this, this for the first time and are kind of like, what the heck? I never even knew about this. <laughs> Again, this is a Roth IRA that you can self-direct. There was a lot in the news this last year with Peter Thiel and his three, four, five billion dollar, whatever Roth IRA that he started in PayPal and Facebook and all these things. You can do the same thing with your Roth. You can invest in uh, any type of small business that you're excited about, crypto, real estate, um, startups. Um, so get out there, use your retirement account and get to the directed IRA summit. It's, it's for real. Um, yeah. tell your accountant. If you, <laughs> seriously, if you're, I know, if, I know <laughs> we, we have quite a bit of advisors and accountants that go every year. Um, other attorneys, obviously a lot of self-directed investors out there trying to learn all the stuff they can do and really kind of basically what, you know, what I like to say, take control of your retirement account. Um, you know, I've been saying this to on some of our crypto stuff, fortune favors the brave, but it also favors the informed. So learn this stuff. All right. Yeah. Uh, it'll help you avoid issues and learn cool strategies and things that, that you can do that can like today, get more money away in a more tax efficient uh, vehicle. I love it. Well, Matt Sorensen brought us in. Yours truly, Mark Kohler. We'll take you out. We thank you for making this podcast a part of your um, education cycle and during the week please give us a shout out a love a like a heart a five star 10 star 10 thumbs up two thumbs whatever just spread the good word and uh, cisco and Ebert, ebert two thumbs up two thumbs up yep and get, find five people and do 10 thumbs up but um or find four people see there's a little find four people there's five of you now times two thumbs there you go 10 thumbs up um everybody please <laughs> i don't know see, it's, you need five people to get 10 thumbs up. Yeah, but you see, but you're one of the five. So you got oh, five, okay. four. find four others. See, okay. this, is, this is why you're not an accountant. You know, I, I mean, I didn't carry the one there. I, sorry. <laughs> carry the one. There's four frogs on a whatever and they jump. How many? Are <laughs> whatever. I don't know. Anyway, everybody, we'll see you next week for another episode of the Directed IRA podcast. Self-direct on. Keep living the dream. Out. And drop. Drop.